Hello, good, let's start again. Yes, hello lovelies, how are we all? Heather, Mandy, uh, I can see you darlings. Tonight I'm cooking an old favorite. It's a bit of a take on a tuna, kind of bakey type thing. Hello Susan, gorgeous woman. Um, so I'm just gonna get started while we're waiting for everyone to join. So um, apologies for my little tech issues at the start. Now, do you wanna know a funny story? So um, today I went to the physio and in my phone it had the appointment at 3.40 and I had a million, a million things to do. But anyway, I said to myself, you know what, no, I'm going, I've made a commitment, I've made a commitment to myself, I've gotta go. Um, but I was telling a little story about the physio, that's what made me do my step back and then I tripped over the back of the cat here. So um, anyway, I didn't wanna go, but I talked myself into going, drove there like a crazy, yes Heather, I am perfectly fine. Drove there like a crazy woman, got there, ran upstairs, go to the ladies at the desk, I'm sorry, I'm so late, I'm running upstairs. Go upstairs and um, and I said, and my physio is not there. So um, I'm thinking, God, this is weird. And then I check all the texts and I can see I don't have a text message as a reminder. So I suddenly realised that the message I got for the reminder was for tomorrow where I've got my pool session. So I'm like, oh, bloody hell. Here I was, I didn't even want to go. And now I'm, um, you know, I didn't even want to go and now I'm going and, you know, there's no support. But then the, um, the physio was actually free. So she had had a person who was in what I thought was my spot not turn up. So there's the universe looking after me. So sometimes when you don't want to do something and you just crack on and do it, the universe finds a way for everything to happen well. Right, got my little breath after having that little tumble. Apologies, I'm so sorry. I hope uh, I didn't give anyone a fright. Um, so, what I'm cooking over here, I'll just bring my pot over if I can. Um, I am just cooking, look, it's an old fave. It's nothing fancy. I've got nothing in my fridge. We had, and I'm going to tell you about this, we had a great big cook up earlier on um, during the week because it was my daughter's birthday last, what day? Friday, Friday, it was the 21st. Now in Melbourne, we can only have what, like 10 people over? So it wasn't exactly how I was planning to do a 21st, but we did a beautiful, it was beautiful. We did um, basically the whole, the whole thing apart from the cake was low carb. So because I'm the cook, I got to choose. So I cooked. It was basically, I should have done a photo shoot, but I'm really, really rubbish at doing photos of myself cooking in real life, unless I make a specific effort like now. So um, I cooked a tofu vegetarian satay. I cooked a buttered chicken, I cooked a green beef curry, and I cooked some Greek beef. And I had it with some Greek salad, and that's it. Oh, and my brother bought a potato salad, which the girls were happy with. So um, it was really simple. So I just think, oh, sometimes you can make, you know, something feels gonna, like it's gonna be hard, and, and it was actually really easy. But the summary of that is that we have no food really in the house because I cleaned out everything doing this and then we had leftovers up until last night. So basically what I'm doing, I've just put some frozen onion. I feel like I should say this every week. I've put some frozen onion into a pan with a bit of butter. And I'm just gonna stir that around. Now in my thermo, who's got a thermi? Um, in my Thermomix, I've got some eggs boiling because I'm going to make, so I'm making a tuna, essentially a tuna bake with a few little, um, sort of a few twists. So frozen cauliflower is going straight in with the onions because it will take a bit longer to cook. Then, I'm just gonna let them cook a bit. I've even, look at this, magically got the lid. So I'm gonna put the lid on that while they cook down. Now, I've already strained my tuna because I figured you didn't want to just see me straining the tuna. And I'm just gonna chop my zucchinis. So these zucchinis, <laughs> they need to be used today. They're a little bit, you know, you know when your zucchinis are getting a bit soggy down the end of your thing? So um, I'm just gonna chop those. Now, when I was driving to the physio, I was listening on the radio to 774 and they had gnats. You know, gnats from gnats, what I reckon. Um, anyway, he's this guy who does cooking shows um, and he's, he does a lot of swearing. But he does have the same philosophies of, of us of real food. He's not a low carber, so he cooks pasta and risotto and whatnot. But he was very, he was, he was actually, it was interesting because he couldn't swear on the, on the radio. So that's part of his kind of charm and humor. 
but I was thinking, they were all talking about how great it is that somebody gets on and shows how people how to cook real food. And I'm thinking, yes, it is. It's really good. Cooking real food is, um, is absolutely the key. So I'm just going to grab from behind here. I'm just going to grab a spoon. So um, it's about, it's been about five degrees in Melbourne today. It's blooming freezing. I've had my Woody on all day. I only got changed to go to the physio. Good. So I'm just going to let that cook, that cook through a little bit. I'm going to turn that up a bit. Um, I've got this old bit of zucchini here. I've got a tin of tuna that I've already drained because I figured you didn't want to see me draining tuna. And then I've fossicked around in my cupboard, in my fridge for what else will I fling in it. So I've got just some tomatoes that need using. I found some bocconcini that needs to be used up. And I'm actually going to try it with an all-purpose. Just This is just the mingle all-purpose. You can buy this at the supermarket if you want to. Um, you know, I usually use the dill and um, garlic, which is called ranch. But um, yes, the pan, the pan is fancy. The pan is actually an old, you know, you guys, we know we've talked a little bit about this. Um, the pan is an old chef's toolbox one that I never used to use um, because it was too big. And I used my other one to death and now it's got bits flaking off it. And I've been trying all sorts of different pans. And I tried, I've ordered a car, I bought a cast iron pan, but it's too heavy and it burns everything. And I know you're meant to season it and there's all these tricks. But for whatever reason, I just can't seem to make it work. I have ordered another pan that Susan has recommended and I'm waiting for that to arrive. But currently, is anyone else finding this? Mail seems to take anywhere between two days and 22 days to arrive. So I'm just gonna wait and see. Um, right, somebody's dropping out, but you're back on. Okay, cool, all right, that's okay. So um, I guess a couple of things that I wanted to bring up just while this is cooking. Um, next week, before I forget, next week there is no cooking show because Dr. Mary is doing a live masterclass on navigating your way through Christmas. So it's online, um, not on Facebook. Facebook's too unreliable for us. It drops out, it does all sorts of things. So it will be hosted on Zoom and you'll need to register to get the link. So if you go to our website, which is rlmedicine.com forward slash thrive, because the masterclass is called Thriving Through Christmas. We know that Christmas can be tricky for lots of people. And so we wanna give you some strategies um, on how to do that. Also look out for our emails because this week I'm doing a feature on strategies through Christmas and actually talking about the difference between a strategy and a tip because they're quite different. Now I'm just gonna give this a little stir. Oh good. So remember all I've done is put in you know, some frozen onion and a packet of frozen cauliflower. And now I'm just gonna fling in my two chopped zucchinis. I'm gonna fling in these tomatoes. I've got these Roma ones. I think they'll be all right, just hold. I'm gonna put in a bit of salt. I've got this Murray, Murray River salt flakes. I'm gonna sprinkle in a bit of mingle. And again, I've got the all purpose one. You can buy this now in, all, in Coles and Woolies. And I think it's called something like put it on everything or whatever. Anyway, I'm just gonna give that a stir. And I'm gonna fling in the tuna. So I've got these boiled eggs boiling in the thermi, um, which I don't use my thermomix that often, I'm gonna tell you. I will be honest, I use it to make mousse, boil my eggs, and every now and then I'll make it like a green chicken paste. Oh, there it goes, it's ready. So I'm just going to fling that in. All right. Give me a sec. I'm just going to grab them off the stove. I won't be a minute. Yourselves. 
So um, I've just put that. I've just got my eggs off the um, off the thermomix, and I've just popped them in some cool water. So remember, in my pan, I've got frozen cauliflower, frozen onion. I've then put in some fresh zucchini. You can put in whatever veggies you like. Okay, you don't have to follow this. Um, and I've put in some tuna and flung in the tomatoes in my thing that look like they need a bit of using up. And now I'm gonna crack these eggs and I'm gonna put some boiled eggs in, extra protein, and then I'm gonna just put it with some cream. I'm just gonna turn that down a bit. So remember your eggs. So they, are oh, you listening to the podcast about stress today? Best explanation of what stress does to the body. That's fantastic, Millie, thank you. So for those of you, I know you probably know, but just in case you don't, we have got a podcast. It's called Real Health and Weight Loss. We're very excited about it. Um, Today's podcast, actually, it's a good and timely reminder, is an interview I did with James Mukey, who's the Australian of the Year from last year. And uh, Dr. James Mukey is an ophthalmologist and has a huge interest in diabetes. So Thursday was World Diabetes Day. Diabetes is a really, really important disease because it doesn't, I mean, it's not, people often think of it as just being a touch of sugar. I have patients and they'll come in and they'll go, oh yeah, I've got a touch of sugar, doctor. It isn't a touch of sugar. It's really, really serious multi-organ disease, causes lots of what we call mortality, which is death, and morbidity, which is, um, you know, I guess illness, pain, disability, all of those sorts of things. It really, really impairs people's quality of life if it's not well managed. If it's well managed and you can help manage it by you following a low carb real food diet. And, and I'm gonna say, for, you know, there are people out there, the low carb, uh, and I, I probably was one of them, a low carb zealot. Um, there are some people who follow a low carb diet who still need medication, okay? And so it's really important that we make sure that we don't kind of make people feel guilty or demonize them or any of those sorts of things if they need medication to manage their diabetes. If you need medication, have it, it's there. It doesn't, it's a combination. I think like everything we, at Real Life Medicine, we're moderates and that, that's not very sexy. It is very, you know, you can sell books, podcasts, YouTube channels by being controversial. But we like to say, you know what? It is, it's all about using as many tools as possible to help you get to where you wanna go. So if you want to go to having a long and happy life, then obviously our foundation, we talk all about the foundations, the low carb real food, sleeping well, managing your stress, all of those. And if you need medications as well, fine, go for it. You know, we, we can't, not every illness in the world can be cured just by, you know, the, using those foundations. So, um, you know, it's again, it's that pendulum. We've got other people at the other end who are who are just, you know, getting their script pad out the minute somebody turns up with diabetes and not offering them any lifestyle management tools. And then you've got other people at the other end who only believe in lifestyle and no medication, and that that's unhelpful as well. Um, so yeah, I'd really go and have a listen to James. He's fascinating. He's got a lot to talk about and um, really, really decent bloke. Um, very happy that he won Australian of the Year. I'm pretty sure the government weren't so happy because I don't think they're expecting him to be so vocal on things like the current Australian Dietary Food Guidelines, which as we all know are woefully inadequate. Um, but he has been and he's been, you know, he was a bit sad about COVID. It's really interrupted his ability to go around and do speaking gigs, which is all really what Australian of the Year is all about, um, and therefore limited his, what, I, I think he's worried he's, he's been a bit ripped off in limiting his ability to be able to help spread his message. But I don't think he has, because you know, he was on, um, as you, for those of you who watched Michael Mosley the other night, he was on that, and, um, and I think he's made his message loud and clear. But yeah, certainly have a listen. Oh, I'm so cross, I've got one of the eggs I've got, I've just done that butchering, you know, where you completely bugger it up with the shell. I know, it's just because it's fresh. Um, so basically, I'm now, cauliflower's lovely and cooked. I've got some cream, 
again I don't this is probably not my usual brand somebody else brought it but um I'm just gonna pop that in there I'll, like so what's that maybe 300 mils of cream give it a bit of a stir through smells good looks good it's really colorful I'll show you a picture I'll show it to you when we're when it's a bit more cooked good I'm just gonna let that go down a bit and I'm just gonna fling these boiled eggs in just in maybe I reckon quarters quarters will do so it's sort of like a tuna mornay but not quite it's sort of like a salad niçoise but not quite sort of like lots of things really what it will be is delicious and nutritious so um and i've realized i've for any people that are ocd i've completely made them go mental because i've got i've sliced some of the eggs into quarters long ways and some of them into quarters short ways but you know doesn't matter All right, I'm hoping this egg will come off a little easier if I can get the skin. Oh yeah, this one's better. So um, yeah, so really I think the idea is that it is. it was World Diabetes yesterday, um, next week on our podcast, so giving away all the trade secrets, we've got an interview with one of our members called Lynn who has done a phenomenal job completely reversing her very severe diabetes, not just a touch of sugar, but severe diabetes lots of insulin lots of complications and has stopped all her insulin by following this low carb real food approach so it is there's lots of things that people can do um this is looking good i am i'm going to call this sort of it is it's salad niçoise meets tuna mornay <laughs> i could probably fling a few olives in if my family weren't so anti-olive i'm so in love with olives who here is it's like a pole I think you are either for or against olives. Who loves olives? Let me know in the, in the chat if you love them so that I don't feel like I'm talking just to myself. Nobody loves olives. Uh, it also might be, and this is again one of those things with Facebook, sometimes it doesn't show me the comments. It's so annoying. Okay, so annoying. Oh, some people love the olives. I can see you now. Thank you. I can see you. Good, there's another little... Good, I've got one more egg to fling in and then I think we're done. So, you know, again, another meal on the table in 20 minutes. The biggest complication being don't fall over at the kitchen bench and make sure your eggs are uh, easy to peel. Other than that, the rest of that dish, this dish is super easy. If you don't like tuna, you could have put shredded chicken in or if you're sick of tuna, you could have put in tin salmon. Um, I know that we've used, we, you can certainly use salmon and tuna interchangeably. As everyone knows from my salmon fish cake thingies, um, and I think Millie, you've made them. Yay, love olives. Melissa loves olives, woohoo. Good, Yoni loves olives. Yeah, I love olives. So what I'm gonna do is put mine in a separate, I'll just put mine on the side. That's the only thing. I, and the only reason I'm even compromising is because once I tried to sneak some olives in, and seriously, my husband has like this nose for olives, even one little olive and he, he feels sick on it. So more, all the more for me. Okay, that's all great. So I'm gonna give this a stir. And as I said, I reckon it's a bit like, it's a salad niçoise meats. And in fact, I'm just gonna fling these in. So this is the um, bocconcini. Just put those in. Oh, and the other thing I found in my cupboard that needs using is um, roast capsicum strips. So really just use, you know, real food. We wanna make sure we don't waste it. So you can add in, when something is, you know, getting up to its use by date, just fling it in. It doesn't matter, it's gonna, it you don't have to follow a recipe, there's no rules. You're the boss, you get to design, boss your meals around, experiment. Sometimes they're gonna work, sometimes they're not. Who cares? Okay, look at that. Okay, can you see all those beautiful colors? So this is my new creation. It's called Tuna Mornay Niswa. <laughs> and uh, it's a really delicious version of a low carb real food meal. All right, lovelies, have a wonderful evening. Remember, next week, no cooking, 
next week no cooking please register for um dr mary's masterclass she doesn't want to be talking to herself either so you go rlmedicine.com forward slash thrive and we i'll be doing the behind the scenes stuff and she'll be doing the talking all right lovelies have a wonderful wonderful week and for those of you who are up at 8 a.m i'll see you in the morning bye darlings